welcome today to Protocol Deviations, Documenting, Managing, and Reporting. My name is Marla Helly, and I will be your trainer today. And a little bit about myself. I have been in clinical research for 25 years. I have worked as a research nurse or a study coordinator, as well as a CRA, and also a clinical project manager for both sponsors and CROs. I am certified through ACRP as a CCRA and also as a project management professional through PMI. And I enjoy training to share with you my experiences about clinical research as well as mistakes perhaps that I have observed or made myself. So to ensure that you grow as a clinical research professional. You did receive handouts for the course, which I have listed here, and we will look at some of those handouts throughout today's training. So with that, we will look at our learning objectives. So we are going to describe the key components of a protocol deviation, both documenting and reporting, as well as identify individual stakeholders' roles in the management of a protocol deviation or deviations, and also to describe a process to proactively identify, track, and evaluate deviations for a greater effectiveness in our overall study management. So when we talk about protocol deviations, we understand that deviations are going to occur in clinical trials. We're never going to have a perfect database. And if we do have a perfect database, that would even make me more concerned because that would say everything is too perfect and we're humans and mistakes might happen. But what we don't want to see is the reoccurrence or the continuation of a repeated deviation. This becomes a practice then where individuals at the investigative site are not following the protocol. And this puts our subjects at risk and also puts the integrity of our data as well as the ability to analyze the data. So we're going to look at this in more detail today. So identifying protocol deviations, how do we do this? Well, before we talk about identifying a deviation, let's first define what is a protocol deviation. So let's use your chat button and share with me what you think ICH defines a protocol deviation. So what do you think ICH states is a protocol deviation or defines a protocol deviation? And then we're also going to compare this to how the Code of Federal Regulations define a protocol deviation. So looking at the differences between how both ICH and the FDA define protocol deviations. So I'll just take a moment while your team comes up with your thoughts and chat through. So thank you. You shared not following the protocol specifically, so inclusion and exclusion, primary endpoints, safety data integrity. Very good. So what we're doing is ICH actually defines a deviation as a change or a divergence or a departure from the study design or procedures that are defined in the protocol. So you said you're not following the protocol specifically. So you are diverting from that protocol. And the Code of Federal Regulation states that a protocol deviation is an unplanned excursion. So this means that this was an unintended change. So you made or implemented a change that was not planned for. So when we define deviations, we look at changes from what was defined within the protocol. And sometimes we may hear these terms such as a violation, a variance, noncompliance, change in research. And really all of these are similar. So they are analogous to a protocol deviation. We did not do what the protocol stated. And this becomes a concern for us 
in clinical research because we are putting then our subjects at risk. And we're going to define how we put patients at risk a little bit later on. Or perhaps you may even have your own ideas how patients now are at risk. 